I'm going to tell you the 10 things that, according to AI, married couples argue about the most. Hi there, my name is James, and thank you so much for checking out my podcast, Dad Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. And just on the very sneaky hope that you might stay around to the end, we're going to go in reverse order. So the 10th thing that married couples argue about the most is personal habits and pet peeves. So annoying habits, personal quirks and pet peeves are things that can really lead to arguments. For example, my wife and other wives I've spoken to seem to get really annoyed when not just your husband but anyone living in the house won't for some unknown reason go to that final yard and put their used couple plate into the dishwasher, preferring to either just leave it on the table or the sink. And just in the name of equality, the thing I know that men really struggle about is quite often when your wife might come in from work on a day when you've been at home and generally making an effort to get on top of the housework, keep the house clean. And instead of acknowledging the numerous jobs you have done and the work you've put in, she chooses to notice the one job you may not have got around to doing. The advice that's really helped me in the past is just learning to develop your screening process. Before you say something, just think, is this helpful? Is this relevant? Is this kind? And I'd say if the answer is no to any of those, then maybe try and rephrase it. Irrespective of how you're feeling after your long day at work or your day with the kids, just take into consideration you have no idea what your other half may have been going through, what they may be worrying about, what stress they may have been dealing with that you have no idea about. If you can put kindness at the forefront, of your intentions, you're on to a pretty good start. And the ninth thing that according to AI, married couples argue about the most, trust and jealousy. Issues of trust, infidelity, and jealousy can be a major source of conflict in marriages. My wife works as a teacher and works with other men. I train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which means often training with other men and women. This all comes down to trust, basically. And if you have issues of trust in your marriage, that's not a good start and that's something that needs to be addressed. The best advice I've heard on this is when you meet a partner, you've got to accept who they are the day you met them. So when you meet your wife, if she has a number of male friends who may be ex-boyfriends, who may be good friends from work, who may be good friends from an activity that you don't do that she's been doing for a long time, you've got to accept that. And in turn, that goes for her. That said, if there's suddenly new behavior, new people mentioned, then that may be a genuine reason to worry. This may be me being very old fashioned, but I'll be honest, I think I'd have a problem if my wife was going out to have coffee or drink with a new man in her life I didn't know anything about. And I imagine she'd probably feel the same. Good advice I've heard is always think, well, would I be doing or saying these things if hey, my wife was in the room? And if the answer is no, being overly flirty with that man at part run, just think, well, how would my partner feel if he was here listening in on this? Would he be okay with that? If the answer is yes, then I think you haven't got a problem. It's a really tough one to deal with, and it's an issue I've struggled with in the past. But you've got to trust someone until they give you reason not to trust them. And the eighth reason, according to AI, that married couples argue, priorities and goals. Differences in long-term goals, career aspirations, and personal priorities can lead to disagreements. If after 40 years of trying, you're still not a world famous DJ, having plowed lots of family money into that investment with no return, I think it might be fair that your partner has reason to be a bit peed off about that. In the same way that if your wife, after 10 years of marriage, suddenly decides actually she doesn't want the same things as you, or wants to go and live in Bali, which is something that was never mentioned when you first got together or got married, I think you'd have good reason to challenge that. The marriages that I see work are the ones that are versatile. People change over time. And if your wife or husband suddenly loses loads of weight, gets really fit and healthy, and actually becomes a better version of themselves, a happier version of themselves, then you need to promote that and support that. I was listening to a really good podcast from a marriage therapist. If your partner gets fitter, gets healthier, gets a promotion, instead of pouring cold water on that, I try and use it as inspiration to become a bit better myself. So when my wife started getting fitter and healthier, drinking less, eating cleaner, then I saw that as a good opportunity to join her. Because actually, the result of me doing that is a better me. And the seventh thing that AI thinks we argue about, time management. Now, I see this as two things. 
Firstly, people get really annoyed about people who are late. If you know that your partner is someone that gets really, really cross when people are late or people aren't where they say you're going to be when you agree, then make an effort not to do that. If after 10 years of marriage, you will probably know your partner pretty well and you'll know the things that push their buttons, don't do it. In the same way, if there's something that they continue to do that really pisses you off or really upsets you, I think you're well within your right to say that. And if and when I need to do that, I'd always come from it from the point of, look, I want us to be the happiest married couple I know. I want us to create the best loving family environment for our children. And in the same way that I want to be able to support you and not do things that upset you, I kind of want you to do the same. I also see issues with time management as how you spend your time. If after a hard day's work, if you choose to spend your time gaming for a couple of hours, as opposed to watching a rom-com or a Netflix drama with her, that's up to you. No one else gets to dictate how you spend your spare time. If she's taking the dog for a walk or going to a spin class, Instead of letting yourself being triggered into the idea that mm, maybe I should be doing that, support her and promote her for doing that. And the sick thing that AI thinks that married couples argue about the most, in-laws and extended family. The saying blood is thicker than water is never more true than in this situation. Irrespective of how much she moans about her family, you can't. You have to listen, support her disappointment, but you cannot put the boot in. When you marry someone, you are also marrying into their family and their friendship group. The problem with joining in on her rant about her mum is that it will be remembered and it may even get back to her mum, which is the last thing you want. Again, always think, if I say this now and it comes up in a conversation, how will it be received? Not easy. Mother-in-laws, father-in-laws, brothers and sisters, needy best friends, can be massively frustrating. But I think if you can do your best not to focus on them, but focus on supporting your partner, that's a pretty good start. And the fifth thing that AI thinks married couples argue about the most, parenting. Couples often disagree about parenting styles. Don't go 10 rounds over your wife giving your son a biscuit, even if he asks you for a biscuit first. It's not the end of the world. When it comes to parenting, whether you like it or not, the minute you become a parent, this is something you two have to work on together. So it makes sense to at least be on the same side. There's also a strong chance that we will parent in the way that we were parented. And there's an even stronger chance that how your wife or husband was parented was not exactly how you were. Again, if you try and come from it from a caring perspective, be curious as opposed to angry about what they decide, be versatile, you'll get through any difficult times. And the fourth reason that AI thinks that married couples argue the most, communication. Misunderstandings, lack of communication, and different communication styles can lead to arguments. If you know that your partner gets upset if you don't leave a kiss at the end of a text message, leave a bloody kiss. We are all complex bags of emotions. A lot of the things we do, we don't know why we do. But if you're doing a very small act like that, really helps your partner, just do it. Partner has said or done has upset you. Instead of instantly flying off the handle, try and get more information or try and clarify exactly what they meant. Because you may have got it completely wrong. And you might be and you might be punishing them or getting cross for absolutely no reason. And the third reason that AI thinks that married couples argue the most, and I'll be honest, I'm surprised this wasn't the first or second, sex and intimacy. Differences in sexual desire, frequency, and expectations regarding intimacy can lead to tensions. If you've been married for any length of time, or even if you've been in a relationship for any length of time, you'll know that there is definitely a honeymoon period when you can't keep your hands off each other. That tends to fade. And that's not a terrible thing. The minute you're a parent, quite often sexual desire is replaced with a need for sleep, or a need to enjoy your own pursuits, or a need to be on your own. Don't read too much into it. And I think on the subject of sex and frequency, quality is better than quantity. I think you're better off having sex once or twice a week, and it's really good, than trying to force the state to some sort of insane schedule that you had in your 20s. People change. And any men who have actually witnessed childbirth and may have been present after childbirth when your wife might have been going through something like an episiotomy, just think that there may be very good reasons why sex isn't actually as comfortable and enjoyable as it used to be. That's not her fault. When it comes to sex, one of the best things I've ever heard is that men are like microwaves in that they can heat up very quickly, but then get cold very quickly. 
Whereas women are more like ovens. They take longer to warm up, but also take longer to cool down. This is obviously an enormous generalization, but quite often men are more visual when it comes to sex and women are often more emotional when it comes to sex. You might need to set the scene. You might need to start the foreplay at breakfast with kindness and flirty text messages that last through the day, leading up to a romantic meal, not distracted by children or the stress of family life. We've got time to actually look after each other. And the second thing that AOA thinks the married couples argue about the most, household chores. The division of household chores often leads to disputes, especially if one partner thinks they're doing more than their fair share. Every married couple will run their family home differently. Some people might live to a spreadsheet. Some people might make a long list of every single household chore that needs to be done and allocates them. That works for you awesome. Other people might just do the work when they see the work needs doing. Again, this comes to communication. If someone asks you if you can do something, then just do it. If you say you're going to do it, just do it. And do it now. One of the best quotes I've seen about how to manage your time was from Gary Vaynerchuk, who said, if there's a job that needs doing, if it's going to take you less than five minutes, do it now. If you're waiting for the kettle to boil, don't use that five minutes scrolling through your phone, earn some brownie points and empty the dishwasher. If your wife is wrestling with a household chore and you're sat on the sofa, not really doing anything, get up and help her. Doing that will make it much more likely that she will do the same in return. And the number one thing that according to AI, married couples argue about the most, and if you watch this far, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Money and finances. I have heard that basically married couples argue about money and sex more than anything. Add in household chores and you're basically there. Disagreements over saving, spending, budgeting, and financial priorities is apparently the most frequent source of conflict in marriage. Again, I think this comes to communication. Does the person who basically is in charge of managing the family finances know the situation? Do they know how good or bad it is? And do they really know? Do they know exactly your incomings and your outgoings? Because if they do, if they know that actually money's really, really tight at the moment and it's really stressing you out, worrying you, I imagine it would diminish the chance of them suggesting, let's spend two grand on garden furniture. I don't think you can get cross with someone for doing something they didn't realize was a problem. Quite often, it's really useful maybe every quarter to sit down with your other half or the person who is responsible for finances and just explain to them, just show them exactly what it is. Because then they won't think you're just being mean. Oh my goodness, we're like a couple of hundred quid in the red every month. There's not enough money at the end of the month. Then they'll help you. I'm really trying to develop this community. And with that in mind, which of the 10 points, if any, are the thing that you often find you argue about the most? Or is there something else? I'd love to know what you think about the content. I'd love to know what you think about the channel. Please do me a massive favor and just say hi in the comments. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care. Hey, Dad, here's a word from our sponsor. Do you miss having something interesting to read in those very odd five-minute breaks from the trench warfare that can be family life? If so, check out www.swifthalf.com. Sign up to their newsletter for jaw-dropping news, some light-hearted nonsense, exclusive offers, and guides.